This is part one of our video that presents a Hello World example of parallel computing using remote procedure call, RPC. Let's first have a brief review on the RPC mechanisms. In an RPC, a client calls a remote procedure, sending the request to the server and waiting for the result. When the server receives the request, it calls a local procedure carrying out the computation and returns the result to the client. Uh, this diagram shows the details of an RPC. The client process first calls the client stub, which marshals the parameter data, builds the message, and calls the local operating system or OS. The local OS sends the message to the remote OS, which gives the message to the server stub. The server stub unpacks and unmarshals the parameters and calls the server routine, which performs the computation and returns the result to the stub. The stub builds the message and send it back to the client and uh, so on. In practice, to develop an RPC application, we first create a file written in interface definition language, IDL, which is compiled by an IDL compiler such as RPC Gen, as shown in this diagram. The RPC gen generates uh, these files, the client code, client stub, header, uh, server stub, and server code. We need to modify the client code and the server code uh, for our own procedures. The files will be compiled by C compiler and linked with necessary libraries to form the executables. for the server and the client. As an example, uh, we compute random numbers uh, in parallel using N servers. This is a very simple example. It's a hello world example of parallel computing using RPC. So in this example, each xi at step t plus 1 is computed by server i using uh, this formula. xi t plus 1 is equal to ai minus 1 xi minus 1 t plus ai xi t plus ai plus 1 times xi plus 1 t mod m. m is uh, an integer. In this equation, i equals 0, 1, to up to n minus 1, uh, as we have n servers. The operation on i, i minus 1, and i plus 1 uh, is taken mod n. And uh, each xi t is computed by the i node in time step t. As an example, consider n equals 3. So in this case, uh, we have three nodes, uh, 0, 1, 2. Uh, if i equals 0, uh, then i minus 1 uh, is negative 1, mod 3 it equals uh, 2, and i plus 1, of course, is 1. If n equals 2, i minus 1 is 1, and i plus 1, uh, mod 3 is 0. So each node has uh, adjacent neighbors. Now consider a, a simple example: x i plus one, uh, x sorry, x i t plus one equals eleven times x i minus one t plus thirteen times x i t plus five times x i plus one t. 
So Hi t plus 1 depends on the values of the adjacent neighbors and uh, itself of the preceding time step. And uh, mod uh, address 31. Okay. So to do this, we use an editor to create uh, the IDL file render.x. Like this. So uh, for each server, we need values from adjacent nodes i minus 1 and i plus 1. So we define a struct program x left and x right for values from i minus 1 and x right for value from i plus 1. RANPRO is the program name. Uh, when servers represents the version, uh, get next random is the name of the procedure uh, with parameters programs uh, with this uh, structure. And uh, one is the service number, uh, and this one is version one, and this number is the program number. Uh, we compile this with the IDL compiler out. PC gem. It generates all the template files. So this is render x. We compile it out PC gem minus C minus A render x. Now you can see that it uh, generates all these files. Uh, this is the header render h used by all the files and this is the uh, client stuff used by the client and this is the uh, server stop used by the server. And this is the XDR file that marshals and unmarshals uh, the data. And uh, this is the server code, okay, template. And this is the client code. And also a make file, okay. make file dot run. So we can compile uh, this into a binary by make minus f make file dot run. Okay. So it uh, generates the client binary and the run server uh, binary. Okay. Now in some cases, you may have problem comparing this. Here we have the same ran dot x, but when I compile that, we get the same uh, files. So we get an error. In this case, you need to uh, add this to the make file minus l. P I L P C and 
and it, com it compiles uh, uh, well. So we compile a file. We just need to remove all the binaries and make again. Uh, to write our application, we modify the server code, which is straightforward a direct implementation of the equation that uh, we discussed. So the, the server code will be like this. So this is uh, our uh, procedure, the server procedure get next ran one as we see. This one is uh, the version number we pass in the uh, parameters uh, that is a struct that consists of uh, the left and right uh, values from the adjacent surface uh, and then uh, the result is the direct computation of, uh, of the formula the 11 times XL plus 13 times uh, result the result is static Okay, that means uh, its current, its previous value plus five times uh, XR okay, passed in from the, the adjacent server, okay, and then mod uh, 31, and then return the result. So this is uh, straightforward. The quant code is a little bit more complicated we need to create three threads. Each thread communicating with a server. We'll use SDL threads uh, like this to create three threads. And all these three threads will execute the same routine. Okay, if we use SDL threads, uh, with uh, IDs, N IDs, N is 3 here. So we create uh, three threads okay, using SDL create thread, all executing the, the same routine threads. And the host, this array, contains uh, the host name of the three, three servers. We put the uh, random numbers generated by servers uh, one, two, uh, uh, zero, one, and two uh, in the, the array X. In this, okay, x and n is free here, right? so we define n to be free, and uh, also n holds. Okay. And then uh, we put uh, this in the, the RNS array, and we save them and print it out at n. So one problem we need to address is to synchronize the thread. So we have totally three, uh, three threads, okay. and uh, we know that the computation of a server depends on the results of uh, the other two servers. Okay. To synchronize this, uh, there are many ways to do it. The simplest way may be using the solution to a barrier problem. We discussed uh, this barrier problem before.
So in a bearing problem, a thread does not proceed to the next stage until all the threads have arrived at the barrier. Yeah. Then uh, all these threads could exit together and then they could re-enter uh, the region and do the, the computation again. Yeah. So this could synchronize the threads uh, they to, uh, to uh, solve the problem. And this can be implemented uh, using condition variable as we discussed in the previous course in a video. So this is uh, an implementation of uh, the solution to the barrier problem uh, using a condition variable. It is uh, quite uh, straightforward and we have discussed uh, this before. Okay. Uh, we'll be a demonstration uh, of uh, running the code in part two of our video. Okay. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.